welcome to this week's video, Focus on Driving. Welcome to this week's video on driving. Um, what we're going to talk about today is everything from setup to actually what you're trying to do to the golf ball when you've got the ball on the tee. So um, first things first, before we go any further, got your driver. Um, everyone's driver is obviously slightly different lofts. Ball position wants to be sort of roughly off the inside of your left heel for this. So, you know, when you when you stamp the ball inside of your left heel there and your left foot, sort of roughly in that area, you want a slightly wider stance for the driver, mainly because if you, if you imagine we've got a narrow stance for the driver, a narrow stance creates a steeper angle of attack, which is more sort of towards your wedges. Driver, you want to sort of widen your right foot so if you put your feet together, little step with your left, just basics, big step with your right, try and feel as your right foot is wider and that will make it, your shoulder turn greater. So you have to, you have to increase your shoulder turn because your stance is slightly wider. If you read a simple tip on Tiger Woods book, for example, he, he says that in his book, when he wants to hit the ball and hit the ball much further, he widens his stance, makes your shoulder turn much bigger and then obviously you can go at the ball a little bit harder. What I see from a lot of higher handicappers who generally slice the golf ball. As I see, first of all, you're aiming left, because obviously you've got a fear of the ball going right, so you're aiming left to try and compensate. And then what we find is the ball gets very forward in the stance, shoulders get very open, and you might even close the face on the driver to try and stop the ball going left to right. But unfortunately, what that does, it creates a downward angle of attack, okay? So when you get the downward angle, downward angle of attack, you get that one that goes low and left, you might get the lucky one that goes you know, a little bit nice and straight, or you get the big left to right slice that we that we all hate. Now, what I want to see from from people is we're trying to hit up on the golf ball here. Okay, so if you if you look at the zip on my on my jacket here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up to the golf ball as normal, and I'm just going to just tilt into my right side. Okay, so stand to the golf ball. I'm just going to tilt into my right side. So basically, what that does when I swing the golf club, I've got the top of my back swing. When I come down, I want the driver to roughly bottom out where, where my zip is, okay? So I want to feel as though the club is, is roughly bottoming out in its arc, about sort of five, six inches behind the golf ball. Now, when that bottoms out and hits the ground, or, you know, roughly hits the ground, we're trying to sweep the ball here, the club has to work up, okay? So when we hit up on the golf ball, what happens is, golf's all about opposites. When I teach people every day, I'm teaching generally the opposite of what you do. Now. When you see these these top top players and they launch the golf ball, the ball is launching like this rainbow effect. Okay, so what happens is you get the, the correct spin, you get the correct launch angle. Now I like to if you've got a let's say a water hose and you're watering the plants in, in lockdown, if you want the hose, the water to go further, you just lift it up. Okay, you get a slightly better launch angle. It's the same as the golf ball. It's exactly the same as what we're trying to do. If you launch it too low, it'll spin up and obviously hit the ground far too early. We're trying to actually, nearly like a tennis shot, feel like we're actually hitting up on the golf ball. Now, when I do that, personally, because I, you know, I get a little bit steep in my golf swing, I try and imagine in front of me there's a goal post or a tree that I have to launch the ball over. And what that allows me to do, when I get the top of my back swing, it allows me to sort of stay behind the ball. And when you stay behind the ball with the driver, there's going to be an element, be an element of a slight release in the driver. You need this, to be honest, because it's a much longer golf club. There's not as lo much loft. The ball's much further away from you, so we need to just help it on its way a little bit. I do not want to see people rolling the hands. I want none of that. It's more of a release, so that we're just adding loft, basically. So if your driver is 10 degrees, like mine, you want to roughly launch the ball about sort of 13, 14 degrees, okay? Now, going back to the, the slicing motion, because this is obviously you know, a, a, a very sort of common fault that I see. If we get the, the open shoulders, and we get the one that now and again, that we, we call the sky and golf, we sky the ball up in the air, you are definitely steep. It's not your tee's too high, and you shouldn't be going to a lower tee. This is when you've got to come see myself, and you've got to iron out your golf swing, because there'll be issues in your backswing that makes you sort of react that way on the way down. It could be in the backswing, it could be an open of the club face and a rolling, so there's a, obviously a squaring of the face over the top. It could be, you know, just lifting your arms. It could be so many different faults in the swing. 
But what we've got to try and do is understand your swing, understand your faults, and then you can progress. Now, it's all right looking at these top players or your YouTube channels and picking up a few tips like we're doing today. But when I'm practicing, I can't understand my swing. So I know what I'm trying to work towards to get better. It's not easy. The game is a hard game. But definitely, definitely understand your swing, understand your back swing, understand your setup. If we can get your setup better, like you've got two rail tracks, your feet and your body's one, the ball and the club is the other, where we're hitting to the target. And then we can start swinging on a better arc and hitting up on the golf ball, you'll definitely improve your driving. We've had a question off Dean Phillips about the basic setup. I covered most of this in the in the video, um, touching on the fact the ball needs to be off the inside of your left heel, wider stance for the driver, especially if you're trying to launch the golf ball a bit more up in the air. Um, but inside the left heel, left foot is where it needs to be. And then obviously we're trying to hit up on the ball that I explained in the video. I've got a question off Tony Bennett, how to hit the ball straighter. Obviously Tony, I've never seen your golf swing before, but you know what we're looking for from, from most golfers to, is to hit the golf ball slightly from the inside if we can so we're looking to get a, a golf club on plane we're going to have a nice rotation to the body so we need to you know, turn the body we're looking for a sort of 90 degree shoulder angle all hugely important things but a great one is like i said in the video is to is to slightly hit up on the golf ball a lot of people if you know i'm guessing here but if you slightly hit across the ball and down and across the ball your ball will move left to right so the spin axis on the ball will start to move left to right when we hit down on the golf ball, you create a lot of backspin, which obviously is, is, is going to help the ball hold its line. But, you know, if we get that spin axis moving left to right or right to left, that's never a great thing. But definitely hit up on the ball is going to allow the, the club to square on its own, launch the ball a little bit better, and that will help you straighten up your drives. I had a question of Paul Lawrence about how to hit the ball further and straighter. Obviously, this is a... Um, a question that you probably need to go and see your, your, your pro because it depends on what you do in your swing if I'm honest um, but if you want to hit the golf ball further like I said wider stance we're 100% trying to hit up on the ball we're trying to hit up on the ball depending on how powerful you are you know you'll, you'll, you'll see every sort of player be slightly different but the, the real power players you know are setting up we're trying to launch the golf ball up in the air the wider the stance the bigger the shoulder turn is going to be obviously that's going to help you create a lot more sort of what we call centrifugal force, a lot more speed in the club head. Don't be frightened to let your arms go as well. You know, if you've got a big body turn, when you get to here, you've got to sink the driver and the and the and the, and the arms and the body up when you're swinging the golf club. That's a, it's a huge thing. So yes, you can you can swing out harder, but it needs to be harder, but in control. Um, if you look at these top players and you actually watch them live, sometimes they, they don't. You know, they are hitting it hard, but. They're only operating around about the sort of eighty percent mark with the driver. But when they really want to go out one, obviously they're gonna they're gonna crank that up into the high nineties, hundreds. But but when you look at you know your your top player or Bryson DeChambeau is using, obviously he's he's doing things that nobody else has done before. He's he's trying to create more speeds, he's in the gym, you know, he's trying to get them arms and the body work, working faster and he's hitting as hard as he can basically. Um, so that is one way if I'm honest you can do it if you want to go down that route and there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, creating speed is a is something you definitely need to work with with myself or your or your pro to, to try and get those numbers up. I've got a question from David Gilroy about how important the the grip width is on your driver um, and every, every iron and every club, but massively important with the driver to get the, the right sort of the width. Now you can see with my sort of grip there when I get a hold of the golf club that my Fingers aren't touching, that's the first sign. If my fingers, if I go down the grip a bit and my fingers happen to be touching the sort of nearly into the, the palm of my hand, that's a bad sign because you're going to have to then adjust your, your hands and move them around to to, to get the, the sort of comfortable feel. You know, you see a lot of people with the wrong grip size having to change their grip and go for an incorrect grip because they're unknown, unbeknown to them, they're, they're moving the hands around. Um, with the driver, we are releasing the hands a little bit, the arms, so we, we need we need the right grip size so slightly you know thinner with the driver um, if you get too thick with the driver if you imagine you're holding the cricket bat sort of size you're not going to be able to sort of release your hands when you when you're hitting the golf shot so getting that grip right grip size is a hugely important thing 
So I would, I would definitely just have two minutes with your pro and, and, and get a grip put on your driver. So a question from Stephen Turnbull, how to hit the draw. There's a few ways you can hit a draw. Um, so you can you can do many things. I was listening to something the other day with uh, John Daly and he was talking about his son's swing, which is quite interesting because I'd never heard it this way before, where his son gets to the top of his backswing and he tries to deaden his legs. And what that does, it allows the sort of club to bottom out early and, and to basically turn over. Um, we're generalizing that you hit the golf ball slightly from the inside because we need to do that if we're going to hit a draw. So we need to create an arc. We need to get the sort of body turn and create that arc. We're looking to hit the golf ball from the inside. Obviously, if you hit up on the ball, like I was discussing in the video, that is gonna, that's going to allow you to, to have a greater chance hitting the draw. So if you look at your, your McElroy's of the world who hit a draw, he stays behind the ball lovely at impact. The club is on plane. You're hitting up on that ball. The hands are let's say releasing a little bit, so there's a little bit of softness to the driver head. We are not, and I'll repeat this, it's really important to understand, we are not rolling the head here, because eventually you will create a hook or hit into a push. We're looking to, to create a nice sort of stable angle of attack, so when the, the driver's coming in, it's bottom now, and we're hitting up. Now, the nature of the driver, because at impact, the driver will bend, so let's push this up against my neck here, the driver will bend this way at impact, okay? So you can see that's increasing loft, and also, the head is trying to go left, it's trying to increase loft, but it's trying to show you some loft. So those things are, are massively important. Like I discussed in the video, if you hit down on the ball, you've got no chance of hitting the, hitting the draw, so we need to hit up on it. Um, and also, you know, the old school way, we, you know, we used to talk about aiming right and rolling the hands. The technology's changed in my book. The ball comes off much hotter now, it's much harder to hit a draw. So even some of the top players are are hitting little fades now because the ball's coming off more like a bullet these days so i wouldn't get too obsessed with hitting the draw because if i'm honest it's quite a hard and high risk shot to hit these days if anyone's need any advice on on grip size for your golf clubs i'll do a free consultation we're now um, providing a, a grip service at the golf club here at longhurst so whether i'm down at the bottom or you can pop into my bay at the driving range just just pop your head in two seconds of your time and i'll be able to advise you on what grips you can use